Alright guys, welcome to our first video over trigonometry. If the video is a little bit fuzzy or staticky here in the beginning, just kind of uh, let it calm down. It will go away, I promise. Uh, just listen to me talk for a couple moments while we let it die down. Um, first off, the um, first topic in trigonometry is over the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, right triangles play an integral part in the study of trigonometry. It is a it is from right triangles that the basic definitions of the trigonomic functions are formed. In this particular unit, we will explore right triangles and their properties. Through this, we will introduce the six basic trig functions and the unit circle. And the six basic trig functions and unit circle create the whole concept, basically, of trigonometry. So first off, let's review a very fundamental theorem in trigonometry that hopefully you guys have learned before, heard about before, the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is most famously a squared plus b squared um, equals c squared. Now the most important thing we have to remember is that c is always the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is a couple things. It is the biggest side. That's one way of recognizing it. And the other way of recognizing the hypotenuse is it's always across from the right, right, there's a right angle. Okay, so if we notice the right angle is marked with the um, little uh, box there, always across from it, whether it's labeled C or labeled anything, it's always across from that right angle. And from this formula, we get A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, so the basic idea says that if you have a right triangle, the A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A is and B are the legs and C is the hypotenuse. But the converse for the Pythagorean theorem is true as well. And the converse says if you have a triangle where a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if that is true, then you must have a right triangle. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So let's look at two basic easy examples here, and our goal in both of these examples is to simply find the missing side. So in the first example right here, we have 8 and 15, and we're finding the missing side. Now we have to determine who's A and who's B and who's C here. Well, the first thing I notice is across from that right angle is the side that's missing, so I'll call it X. And because it's across that right angle, when I go to this formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I automatically have to fill in x for the c, because it's the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Who's a and who's b? It really doesn't matter. I know that the 8 is across from the a and the b is across from the 15, but it really does not matter who you call a and b, but it is extremely important who you call c, the hypotenuse. So 8 squared is uh, 64, I believe. Um, 15 squared, I think, is 225 equals x squared. And I'll give you guys a second here if you uh, haven't already gotten out your calculators. I'm sure you are eager, eagerly sitting there trying to figure out on your calculators what the heck uh, 15 squared is and adding these together. But 15 squared plus 64 there is going to be 289. Okay. And um, that's x squared, but of course we're looking for x. We're going to take the square root and the square root, and we get the square root of 289, I believe, is a perfect 17. Now, I want to remind you guys, I don't want any decimals, so if it's not perfect, um, you would have to go ahead and reduce the square root, okay? Now, um, numbers like this that are perfect, perfect whole numbers, like 8, 15, and 17 that make a right triangle are all known as Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples are three values where the two smaller ones um, squared add the get equal the larger one squared. Let's look at this one over here. We got some square roots. Makes it a little bit tougher. First thing I notice is who's across from that right triangle? 5 radical 13. So now I do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I don't really care who's a and b, but I know across from that right angle has to be the c. So I know that 5 radical 13 squared has to go over there. Now who's a and who's b? It, it doesn't really matter. I'll let a be the x that I'm looking for, and uh, I'll let b be the 5 radical 7 squared. So now the tricky thing is dealing with square roots and squaring them. Um, be very careful. So when you're squaring 5 radical 7, 5 squared is 25. Radical 7 squared is radical 49, which is just 7. Over here, 5 squared is 25. Radical 13 squared is the square root of 169, which is just 13. So I got to do a little bit of math here. 25 times 7 is 175. So x squared 
plus 175 equals 25 times 13, which is 325. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 175 over. So 325 minus the 175 is 150. And I'm going to take the square root. And I notice that 150 is not a perfect square, so I do have to reduce that. Um, 150 is 25 times 5, I believe, right? 25 times, oh no, 25 times, uh, oh boy, I think I did that wrong, didn't I? 25 times 6, sorry. I knew something was fishy there. 25 times 6, and the 25 has been on his best behavior, so he comes out as a 5 radical 6. So that missing side is 5 radical 6. Now I know you may say, wait a minute, when we take square roots, aren't we supposed to put a plus or minus in front? Well, you are, but remember these are actual triangles, and triangles cannot have negative side lengths. So in these aspects of triangles, when we're dealing with triangles, we do not think about the fact that it could be negative. We just use the positive, okay? And again, uh, earlier I mentioned Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples are three numbers where the two small ones squared add together equal the third one squared. So let's, uh, we have three examples here. Another kind of small if you can see them. But the first example, uh, we have 7, 24, and 25, and we want to see if those are Pythagorean triples. We just want to check. So to check if they're Pythagorean triples, we would do 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. We're going to put a question mark here because we're not sure. So we get 49 um, uh, well, 25 squared is two, 625, so we get 49 plus 625 is 674. Um, that's 49 plus 625, I'm sorry, yes, 25, well, I messed this up, totally messed this up, I didn't take my time. 7 squared is 49, let's do that, 24 squared is 576, 25 squared is 625, and I need to see, is this true? So 49 plus 576 is 625. So we do know for sure that these are Pythagorean triples, okay? Um, B here, we got 9 squared plus 40 squared equals 41 squared. And I can use my calculator, 9 squared plus 40 squared is 1681. And is 41 squared 1681? Yes, it is. So it looks like we have another set of Pythagorean triples there. And we got one more. 11 squared plus 56 squared equals 57 squared. Is it? I don't know. 11 squared plus 56 squared is 3257. And 57 squared is 3249. So, no, um, this example is not... Pythagorean triples. So that, that makes a lot of sense. That should be fairly easy. All right, the next thing we have to talk about in order to get ourselves ready for trigonometry is the distance formula. If you remember, the distance formula is simply the distance between two points. Okay? Um, and remember, the two points um, we refer to as x and y. And the other one is also x and y. Now the problem is they're both x and y, so we distinguish them as x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, the second and the first. And the idea is that you have to find the um, to find the distance between two points. You essentially are using a right triangle. So here's two points, negative one comma six and five comma negative three. And we're essentially is what you do is to find that red bar there, the distance. We're going to make a triangle. So we're going to drop this straight down vertically, straight over horizontally. And what we do is basically we're, we formed a right triangle. And we know these vertical distances. For example, that would be the distance from six to negative negative 3, the vertical distance of the y's, so the distance from 6 to negative 3 is a total distance of 9, and then the distance of horizontally, which is the negative 1 to 5, horizontally would be the x's, and that distance is from negative 1 to 5 is negative 6, so we have the two sides of our triangle, 9 and negative 6, and it's a right triangle, so we do 9 squared plus negative 6 squared, and that's going to equal the, the distance squared of our, um, you know, our, our length that we're looking for. So we get 81 plus 36 equals x squared, and 81 plus 36 is 117, and uh, we get that the um, distance we're talking about is the square root of 117, which cannot be broken down at all. So anyway, let me kind of write down how to find the distance formula. So the distance squared is equal to the difference of the x's, that's your horizontal distance, so we can do x1 minus x2, okay, squared, plus 
the distance vertically, that length, which would be y1 minus y2 squared. And some people say, no, isn't it x2 minus x1? It, the order really doesn't matter because you're getting squared anyway, and when you square, you're going to become a positive. So we got the vertical distance right here, squared, plus the horizontal distance right here, squared, and that's going to equal our distance. So a lot of times the distance formula, remember we got to get rid of that square by taking a square root. So the distance formula is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And it's using the Pythagorean theorem. A lot of people don't realize that. And when you square root, these squares do not cancel because of the plus sign right there. It makes it a little bit different. So it's basically trying to find, you're finding your vertical distance, your horizontal distance, and you're setting up the Pythagorean theorem is what you're doing with the distance formula. So let's do a couple examples here. I know that these problems, it's uh, kind of small to see. I apologize. But um, letter A there is 4 comma 2. I'll write a little bit bigger here. 4 comma 2 and negative 9 comma 5. Okay, so the distance is going to be the uh, horizontal distance is the difference between 4 to negative 9. And you can do that in your head actually. That's 9 and 4 is 13, but it'd be 4 minus negative 9 squared. And notice that's going to become a 13. We'll show that in a second. And then over here, the, the, hor the vertical distance is from 2 to 5, and that's easy. The difference between 2 to 5 is 3, but it'd be 2 minus 5 squared. Now, um, let's see here. I'm going to get a 13 squared there. Back here, I'm going to get a negative 3 squared. Now, you got to understand, I know that's negative, but it's a distance. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, I know I went 2 minus 5, but I could have easily went 5 minus 2. It's the difference, which I'm going to get um, negative 3 there. But it, it could have been a 3. It's going to get squared anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I get 169 plus 9, and 169 plus 9 is 178. So I get the square root of 178 is the distance. Now I should check and see if that can be broken down. Try to divide it by a couple, you know, common uh, perfect squares and see. I don't believe I'm trying a bunch of numbers here. It doesn't look like it can be broken down. So you would leave that as your final answer. And let's do this one other one here. It's negative 10, comma 3, and 0, comma negative 15. So again, the distance between these two points is going to be the horizontal distance from negative 10 to 0. So that's obviously 10 units. Um, again, but when I subtract them in this order, I'm going to get negative 10, but it's the idea of it's 10 units. Be the between negative 10 and 0 is 10 units, okay? Plus how many units between 3 and negative 15? So I can do 3 minus negative 15. But again, just think, how many units in between? I got 15 one way, 3 the other, so it's a total of 18, and that's what's going to happen when you, when you get that anyway. So let's see, here I'm going to get negative 10 squared. Back here I'm going to get 18 squared. So let's see, and again, the whole idea is when you square, the negative doesn't matter anyway. So you get 100 plus 18 squared is 324. I didn't know that. So anyway, the distance is the square root of 424. And let's see if we can break that down. Um, it is divisible by 4. I'm just checking to see if there's divisible by any other ones. Um, off the top of my head, I don't think it is. Um, let me just check here. I don't think it is, but it is It is 4 times 1, oh boy, 4 times 106. So uh, I could clean this up to 2 radical 106. And then I don't think 106 can be broken down. I think that's prime. So anyway, or not prime, excuse me, not prime. It doesn't have any perfect factors. So anyway, that's how you use the distance form. It's really, really easy. So hopefully that quick little lesson there over the distance form Pythagorean theorem made sense to you guys. And... Um, Hopefully that's a pretty easy lesson to start off with. And why is this so important in the world of trigonometry? You have to understand that trigonometry is the whole idea of the study of triangles. Trigonometry is the study of triangles. It all comes back to triangles. So understanding right triangles is really, really important. And you may be saying, well, why are we talking about the distance formula then? Because remember, the distance formula is the whole idea of a right triangle being created by going vertically and horizontally to find that um, hypotenuse value, which is the slant of the line we're looking for. So it's really important that you understand it's the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, each squared and added together, and then square root to find that x. So it's, it is using the Pythagorean theorem to use that distance form. It's really important. So we'll do some problems in class, practice a little bit. Hopefully that was a nice, nice first easy lesson for uh, trigonometry for you guys.